The Holocaust, defined as the systematic killing of six million European Jews in Nazi-occupied Europe, was an attempt to completely eliminate European Jewry. But did you know that the Jews were not the only victims of the Nazis? The Nazis also targeted many different minority and ethnic groups. During World War II, the Nazis primarily targeted the Jews. However, as the Germans invaded East, they also killed, enslaved, or displaced millions of Slavic people. While there is some debate amongst scholars as to whether the genocide of the Slavic people should be separate from the Holocaust, the two genocides overlapped and were both part of the same Nazi scheme to expand East and purify the German race. The Slavic people are a group of several different ethnic and linguistic groups which mostly reside in Eastern Europe. Eastern Slavs include Russians, Ukrainians, and Belarusians. Western Slavs include Poles, Czechs, and Slovaks. The Southern Slavs are the Serbs, Croats, Bosnians, Slovenes, Macedonians, Montenegrins, and Bulgarians. Before we examine Slavic peoples during Nazi occupation, we must first discuss the Nazi ideology. The Germans believed that race was based on blood and could not be changed based on how people identify themselves culturally. They thought themselves to be the superior Aryan race. The Nazis based this racial ideology on eugenics, a concept which was developed in the late 19th century and became popular after World War I. Eugenics is a pseudoscience which claims that selective reproduction can purify a race by increasing desirable characteristics. Even though eugenics is entirely unscientific, the Nazis used it to justify killing millions of people, keeping other races which were thought to be inferior to the Germans from tainting German blood. Killing these people eliminated the possibility that a German and a Slav, Jew, or any other person considered to be inferior could reproduce. In addition to killing, they also sterilized Slavs. German doctors experimented with new techniques for mass sterilization, hoping to eventually cause extinction for the Slavic people. Hitler wanted a place in Eastern Europe where all of the racially purified Aryan race could live together. This concept of an Aryan living space was called Lebensraum. Lebensraum was part of a bigger Nazi plan called the General Plan for the East. This plan was the blueprint and justification for killing millions of Slavs and Jews in order to expand the territory for the German people. Hitler wanted his Lebensraum to be east of Poland in Soviet territory, but he had to go through Poland to get there. The Nazis invaded Poland in 1939, and the Poles were quickly overwhelmed by the Germans. After the Germans invaded, they built thousands of concentration camps, including Auschwitz, in Poland, where the Nazis would eventually send millions of people, Slavs, Jews, Roma and Shinti, Afro-Germans, Communists, Jehovah's Witnesses, and disabled people to their deaths. Most of the killing of the Holocaust took place in eastern Poland, Belarus, and Ukraine. The Poles and the Slavic groups in the Soviet Union, the Russians, Belarusians, and Ukrainians, were subjected to immediate brutality after the German invasion. The first victims were Bolshevik commissars. The Nazis especially targeted the Polish leading class, called the intelligentsia. The Polish people were labeled Untermenschen, meaning subhuman in German. Heinrich Himmler, a leading member of the Nazi party and head of the SS, said, All Poles will disappear from the world. It is essential that the great German people should consider it as a major task to destroy all Poles. The Germans recruited Volksdeutschen, people who were culturally German but living outside of Germany in countries like Poland, to help them kill the Slavs. Some Polish people killed their German neighbors for helping the Germans slaughter thousands of Polish people. The Poles who survived the invasion were sent to concentration camps or forced out of their homes. 
Sometimes they were only given a few hours to leave or they would be killed. The Germans saw Slavic lives as expendable and meaningless. Heinrich Himmler equated the Slavic people to working animals, saying, What happens to a Russian or a Czech does not interest me in the slightest. We Germans, who are the only people in the world who have a decent attitude towards animals, will also assume a decent attitude towards these human animals. But it is a crime against our own blood to worry about them and give them ideals. There is very little evidence in Nazi leaders' writing that there was some formal hierarchy of races within the Slavic people to the Nazis. Some scholars believe that the reason certain groups were targeted more lethally than others was because some groups resisted more than others. The Polish state was uncooperative with Hitler when he first invaded, and some scholars believe that the defiance against the Germans sparked the violence from the Nazis. The Polish resistance led the Warsaw Uprising against the Nazis in 1944, but the Nazis crushed the uprising and the city was destroyed. In Yugoslavia, Serbian and Slovene peoples who resisted against the German invasion were brutally punished. In response to the resistance, the Germans enacted policies against the Yugoslavs. For every one German killed by a Yugoslav, a certain ratio of Yugoslavs would be shot and killed by German soldiers. Sometimes the ratio was 50 to 1, other times it was hundreds to 1. Most Croats, Slovaks, and Czechs did not fight back against the Nazi invasion and instead collaborated with the Nazis by producing war materials in exchange for relative peace. However, there were still instances of Germans killing thousands of Czechs and Slovaks in mass murders. In addition, Slovaks and Croats voluntarily instituted anti-Semitic laws under German occupation, actively helping the Germans eliminate European Jewry. However, they didn't have much of a choice. If the Slovaks and Croats defied the Nazis, they would have been killed. However, by helping the Nazis, they helped kill thousands of Jews. Although much of the killing took place in Ukraine, as the war progressed, the Nazis weakened their control over the Ukrainian people. The Germans allowed the Ukrainians to form the Ukrainian Relief Committee, a group committed to strengthening Ukrainian cultural, educational, and economic organization, even though they were still under German occupation. Some Ukrainian mayors and village chiefs played influential roles in killing thousands of Poles and turning in thousands of Jews. Motivations for enforcing German policies could have been for safety, economic, social, or nationalistic reasons, or in protest against the Soviet policies in place before the Germans invaded. Regardless of motive, there is no doubt that many local authorities in Ukraine participated in killing or turning in Jews. Later in the war, some Ukrainians were recruited into a Ukrainian SS unit supported by the Germans. After the war, Ukrainian authorities denied involvement in Nazi activity, glorifying a heroic effort against the German invaders instead. Another example of Slavic people participating in Nazi activity was the Schutzmannschaften, which operated in Belarus. Members in this group were Ukrainian, Latvian, and Lithuanian. This group actively rounded up and killed Jews to help the Nazis. Most of the victims of this group in Belarus were Jewish. However, after the war was over, the slaughter of the Jews in Belarus was rebranded and presented as the slaughter of all Belarusian people. The rebranding of the Holocaust in Ukraine and Belarus show the distortion of history through national narratives which can make it hard to know exactly what happened. The Ukrainians wanted to highlight their struggle against the Germans, whereas the Belarusians wanted to highlight their victimhood. After the war started, German authorities realized that they would not be able to grow their population as quickly as they wanted, so they proposed a plan called Operation Huaktion. German racial experts captured thousands of children who were deemed suitable for Germanization 
and sent these children to be raised by German families in order to have the population growth that they wanted. According to the Germans, the captured Slavic children would become German when they became a part of German culture. However, the Nazi racial theory, based on eugenics, claimed that race was based on blood, not culture. These inconsistencies show how arbitrary the Nazi racial theory and eugenics were and how the Nazis were willing to bend their own theories to benefit themselves. The German racial experts in a policy called Lebensborn, which translates to Fountain of Life, thought that certain Slavs, like Czechs and Belarusians, could be suitable for Germanization. This policy also encouraged SS soldiers to have as many children as possible with women who were deemed racially pure, treating women as mere means to create perfect children. These children were taken by the SS, who then took charge of the children's adoption and education. The Nazis treated the Slavic people very inconsistently, oftentimes favoring some people in order to exploit or kill others. The Nazis believed that eugenics justified the killing of millions of people thought to be racially impure. While the Nazis primarily targeted European Jews during the Holocaust, the Slavic people were also victims as well as persecutors, swept up in the Nazi scheme of racial purification. Thank you.